Monday, September 9th, 2019. I'm Andrea Linares. We begin today with a storm that continues to impact so many. Hurricane Dorian, over a week after walloping the Virgin Islands, unleashing misery on the Bahamas, and then making landfall in North Carolina, now lashing far eastern Canada with hurricane force winds for months. Meanwhile, almost a week after Hurricane Dorian struck the Bahamas, some residents are finally returning to their neighborhoods to see the damage that was left behind. Media Cavazos has the story. I residents of the Bahamas have criticized their own government for failing to provide proper and rapid assistance. And amid criticism, Bahamian officials say that at this time, they are doing everything they can to search for the missing throughout various neighborhoods in the island before they can provide an official death count. Back to you, Andrea. Thanks so much, Nidia, for that report. So sad. A Bahamas resident has shared video of the hurricane damage in the Abaco Islands and a barge filled with evacuees. Those whose efforts are ongoing after Hurricane Dorian devastated several Bahamian islands. Now humanitarian aid is pouring in, but many there are offering relief worry. There's more need than resources. Geria Tejeda shows us the efforts of people trying to help and how you can pitch in. The road to recovery will be long for the Bahamas. My colleague Lorraine Gassides was on the grounds covering the devastation there. And Lorraine is finally back from the Bahamas. And she joins me now to give us an idea um, to talk about your experience, which I'm sure this has all been horrific to witness. When we see those images, do we really get a sense of what's going on there? Or is it a big difference when you're on the ground covering this? You know. I it's the, you get some sense, but not the reality, because it's impossible to capture on video and pictures the, you know, the feeling, the overall feeling that you get when you see what's happened. The first thing is log logistically, it's been very difficult for a lot of the help and authorities and search and rescue missions to get to these places because it was even hard for us to be able to cover the, the storm. We had to fly, yeah, we had to fly to Nassau first which from Miami is like a 30 minute flight. But once we were there, the big problem is how do we arrive at the affected areas, Abaco and Freeport and Grand Bahama? We had to wait for that night when we arrived on Wednesday night. On Thursday night, we had to wait for a cruise ship from Royal Caribbean to be able to you know, give us space in their cruise ship. And they were the ones who took us to this affected area. Then we had to take a ferry. From a ferry, we arrived at a port where, hey, you know, we're gonna make it out of this. We're gonna reconstruct it. We're fine. We're okay. This is this is gonna be over soon. And it was very striking to see that because it was so sad to see everything that was that was happening and to see them with that, you know, um, spirit when you yourself feel, you know, it's a helpless situation. Now there's a lack of water, lack of food, medications, I'm sure, and also no electricity. So, what do they need most right now? Because we know a lot of people in the South Florida community, even Central Florida, are sending out aid, but what do they need most? Right now, the process for the Bahamas is going to be reconstruction. A lot of the places that were affected, as you've seen in the island, because of the many bodies that are lying around still in the middle of debris and they haven't been it's, picked up, recovered. And exactly, uh, and search and rescue. some of the things that we heard on, on, on the ground with people like the priority now is to come and get the people that are alive. The bodies will be there when there's a chance to come pick them up. Um, so a lot of the people that lost family members understand this. And they're like, no, we know the priority right now, even though we hope to get the bodies back, is to get people that are alive out of these islands so that they can come to NASA and get help. Well, thank you so much, Lorraine Gassides, for sharing your experience with us as you were there reporting on the ground from the Bahamas. Thanks again. Meanwhile, back here in the U.S., as millions get back to normal after Hurricane Dorian, one family of eight in Charleston, South Carolina, is struggling after the killer storm left them homeless. But David Romo explains they say they're simply grateful to be alive. President Trump's claims that Alabama was at risk from Hurricane Dorian continued to stir controversy. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration defending the president. Meanwhile, another issue turned up over the weekend. The Air Force has ordered a review of all international layover stays at Trump's resort in Scotland. The committee is expected to vote this week on a resolution laying out the procedures for an impeachment investigation. That vote will lay out the ground rules for conducting hearings. 
closer and closer to next year's pivotal presidential election, we want to take a good look at those interested in taking on the president next November. Here's Carolina Rosario with a look at California senator and presidential candidate Kamala Harris. Democratic candidates are unified in their goal of defeating President Donald Trump in 2020, but they differ on what they will do if they reach the White House. So what does each candidate think about the key issues facing Latinos? Let's take a closer look at Kamala Harris. Information is power. You can visit univisionnews.com to learn more about all the 2020 presidential candidates. We have much more news still ahead, including the latest on a cargo ship. Welcome back to You News. In the deep waters of the Atlantic, the race to find four crew members missing after this cargo ship capsized near the Georgia coast. Authorities hoping that new clues could mean that some are still alive inside that vessel. Rafael Rodriguez has the latest. Earlier today, a salvage team made contact with the missing crew members of the Golden Ray cargo ship. Their conditions are unknown, but an extraction is being planned. In other news, now to Los Angeles, where the homelessness crisis is getting worse. On average, three homeless people die in the city every day, almost double the number of homicides in that same city. The crisis highlighting a host of issues. One of the major ones, as Azul Alvarez explains, is how to keep homeless people safe and alive. Turning to New York City, stories of rat infestations there are as old as the Big Apple itself, but one company believes it has the most effective and efficient solution to help combat the growing rat population in America's largest city. Fabiola Galindo brings us those details. The borough president who kick-started this initiative says he's going to lobby City Hall to dedicate more funding to this pilot program that for now will only be able to install two more boxes at two buildings for public housing. In New York, Fabiola Galindo, U News. That's too good to be true. A couple in Pennsylvania is facing theft charges and over $100,000 in overdraft fees after allegedly using money that was accidentally deposited into their bank account. Paola Byron has the details. Say the president Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador has made cracking down on cartels a central part of his agenda. But a recent sentimental plea to would-be criminals is being viewed with some with a lot of skepticism. Ms. Giselle Robles explains, and we have to warn you that this story contains some graphic images. Later, two thrilling U.S. Open finals matches took place in New York over the weekend. Rafael Nadal won the title in a marathon match last night, his 19th career Grand Slam championship, leaving him one short of the all-time record held by Roger Federer. Meanwhile, 19-year-old tennis phenom Bianca Andrescu beating Serena Williams to win the women's title. Meridi Morangi has more. I'm now to check in with Lorraine Gasteres for a preview of the second hour of U News. Lorraine, what do you have for us today? Thank you, Andrea. We have a lot more coming up on U News, including an update on chef and humanitarian Jose Andres and his organization's efforts to feed those devastated by Dorian in Bahamas. And new details emerging as investigators continue to probe a deadly boat blaze in California will tell you why authorities are concerned and no one was on watch the moment the fire began. And caught on camera, the terrifying moment a man tries to abduct a woman. The details on that attempted kidnapping and so much more coming up in just minutes. But Andrea, now back to you. Lorraine, thanks so much. We'll be watching. But first, right after... Mexico's Independence Day is right around the corner on September 16th, but over the weekend, several U.S. cities began to celebrate early. In Chicago, thousands took to the streets to share the joy and nostalgia that comes with being far from home. Gianni Aponte has the story. And now the heartwarming story of a Missouri woman who is on a mission to feed kids in her community who live in poverty and who sometimes may go hungry. Grecia Lastra has more. Perhaps she can start a trend in her community so other people start doing the same to help out those children in need. That's all the time that we have for the first hour of U News, but remember to stay tuned for the second hour today with Lorraine Gossett. We have much more information coming up next. And remember, you can follow us on social media at Univision News. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.